Okay, now we're going to talk about SQL injection. This is a type of attack. It's a method of manipulating a database into leaking information. That's what it is in a nutshell. And the way you do it is you take a valid query and then you kind of modify that query a little bit. So let's look at what a valid query is. Select star from products where ID product equals 25. So the things to note here are the select, the asterisk, and the two apostrophes around the 25. If I were to take one of those apostrophes off of the 25, it would corrupt the query. If you submitted that to a, a, web, um, a database, it wouldn't know how to understand it. It would kick it back as an error. Another valid query is update products, set, parenthesis, ID product equals 50, close parenthesis, where ID product equals 25. There's another one called delete from products. Notice the semicolons at the end of these statements. Another one called drop tables from products. These are all valid queries. If you don't know SQL, you need to do some SQL queries on a database. You need to stand up a database, MySQL or MariaDB, which is the same nowadays. Um, so you need to go through and work through some of these so that you understand what a valid query looks like. If you're starting to see these in your logs with errors, that's people trying to perform SQL injection. So let's see. Um, for the test, you need to remember that injection strings start with an apostrophe, a single apostrophe or a single quote. Okay, so the reason they want to do that is they're trying to invalidate your statement that you're going to use that's going to include their data. So let's say um, how these work and where input sanitizing comes in. Remember we talked about the number one way attackers attack a system is through the inputs and not sanitizing those inputs. So let's say you select star from products where ID product equals 25. But let's say 25 was coming as an input from the web browser. What product ID do you want to query on? So maybe you want to look for cigars or you want to look for lighters. So you're looking for a type of product. You're looking for the word lighters or cigars, but you're not sanitizing your input. So in that statement, I could put another apostrophe, which closes this one. Okay. So if I take the 25 out and replace it with select star from, or apostrophe, select star from star, and that's it. Now notice you have a SQL statement inside of, embedded inside of another SQL statement, and that will work. So that's one way to perform SQL injection. If you sanitize the input or use a WAF, if you don't know how to sanitize properly or you don't have the time to change all of the code, then you can use a WAF, a web application firewall, to harden against this kind of thing. So that's how these work. So an attack uh, example URL. So... Um, you have a URL that's taking parameters from the website uh, via a get method. ID equals 10, union select one comma null, null with the two uh, hyphens at the end, which is a comment. So anything after that, so up at the top, what they're trying to do is modify your original statement and they're just commenting out the end and adding their stuff in. So that's kind of some of the strategies here. These are what they look like. So if you see these kind of things in your logs, you need to make sure that you're hardened against SQL injection. So here's another example of unsanitized input. Any username equals one, uh, one equals one, apostrophe, any password. So that might be a way to insert your own password into the system or to pull out any password or whatever it is they're trying to do. Just remember for the test that injection strings start with an apostrophe. In real life, you need to know what SQL injection is. It is incredibly common and incredibly powerful attack vector. Microsoft SQL. Microsoft SQL is a database. So there are several different types of SQL databases. There's Oracle, um, and SQL, by the way, stands for Structured Query Language. So there's uh, Oracle, MySQL, Maria, which are now combined. They're the same thing. Um, and then MS SQL, and then there's Just SQL, there's Postgres SQL, many different types of databases. But all the string commands are pretty much closely going to resemble one another. So if, if a string, if a, if a basic query works on one server, that basic query will work on another server. The complex queries get different. Um, MS 
SQL has an XP underscore command shell feature, allows issuing commands from the SQL server to the OS. So this is going to be a test question. So you will see this on the test. Uh, what does XP command shell do? It allows issuing commands from the SQL server to the OS. So if I'm able to find default credentials to get into the SQL server, the Microsoft SQL server, or MS SQL, Microsoft SQL, then I can start issuing commands to the OS on the machine, and I don't have any rights on the machine. But the SQL database runs usually with admin privileges or higher privileges. So you're likely allowed um, to run a lot of very powerful commands. You can use the PowerShell commands, all kinds of things. So it's a pretty dangerous feature. Um, but the test, there's a test question around this, which is why it's included here. Let go, you decide if you ever